first things first, I've already put the uh, thread uh, on the hook there. Um, okay, it's that lime green one, which I'm going to use for the uh, underbody. Uh, next step, or the first thing that we're going to tie in after that, uh, it's going to be our, get the focus, usual problem, our CDL, or Coq de Leon. It's very fun to say. Uh, now you only need oh, a very small amount of fibers. You don't want anything thicker than you know, the gauge of your hook. You can just take a few, you can take a little pinch, and if you preen the, yeah, yeah, you just preen the feather back, and you'll get them sticking out in, in line. And you can just grab them, pull them, and they'll uh, just tear away from the uh, rest of the feather. Right, and I like a tail that is about approximately, give or take, um, the same length as the hook shank, and I've pulled the line out too far, line of thread. I mentioned this before in some of these other videos, if you can get less line out, you're going to have better control, uh, which will mean uh, you can be more sure of your wraps, a bit tighter, and get things in where you want them to be. Cool, and they'll just stick out there like that. And we'll just trim off these uh, little curly ends. Don't need them, don't want them. Cool. I'm just going to tidy this up quickly. And just keep it preened back there a bit. Um, that's a bit rough trying to reach around the camera, so I uh, do apologise. It's probably not going to look as sharp as it could, but I uh, just trying to give you an idea here. Alright, once you've got them in, uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing a thread body for this, so you just want to build it up and uh, you jump there, and just make your way back, and just try to be a little bit looser on those last wraps, um, we'll just keep the tail uh, more together and pulling it down, which will flare them all out, uh, we're just going to build up a bit of a taper on the body here, and again, it's probably not looking as sharp as cool, that's not too bad. And it's just going to give that sort of tapered, uh, buggy sort of look. Now, I just realized I forgot to mention it. Um, I was showing you the materials, but what we are going to do is we're just going to take some green sharpie, or whatever takes your fancy for this and you don't have to do it it's just a little aesthetic extra the fish aren't going to look at it and go well it doesn't have any ribbing I'm not going to eat it I'm pretty sure it'll go fine anyway and you just wrap that up uh, it's just a replacement of the wire so you're not going to have uh, any weight there And we'll just put a little thread base down there. Right, next step. Now you don't have to do this, but oh, I like it just given I've used that um, marker on there, in theory. This will stop it from running away, but it's just a little bit of UV finish over it. And we'll just coat it with that. I always like the way it sort of we'd say it makes it more vibrant but it's something about putting that UV finish on these flies and it just sort of makes them pop a little bit a bit hard to tell this is slightly out of focus but I'll get a little bit there and just make sure you get it covered you don't want too much um, just enough to spread around I like to use the bogkin for this, so uh, gets the job done. I might need something a bit sharper if I go uh, any smaller than this. All right, and you just give that a zap with your old uh, UV torch, which will just to cure that. Sweet, 
crazy. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit bumpy, but you'll get there. All right, CDC. It's super water resistant, floats like a drink. Uh, so you can get two. You can see they sort of uh, get rid of one of them because it's going to be a bit hard to see, but you see it sort of curves down like that. Now we just want to marry them up so that the curves go in the same way and the tips are very tip top, uh, somewhat aligns as much as you can. Now you're going to preen them back because uh, I want to get rid of this little bit here. Now you can just snip that out. Uh, my infinite wisdom I prepared to earlier. So you can just jump back in. As you can see, I've gotten rid of that. And just preen them forward. Well, as much of those fibres uh, sticking back and being trapped and just sort of roll it onto your side of the hook and as you roll over, it's going to get pulled back over. So it's sitting on top. You want this uh, right on top. Then I've caught those uh, properly on feathers and just pull back. Keep it on top. You felt, uh, you probably wouldn't see it, but you can just feel as that stem goes in. And I want it to be just shy of the length of the tail. It's not quite as long, but close to. You'll see better when I move my great big fat finger out of the way, but there you go. Some of it's going to hang down and move around, but that's all right. This isn't a what you call a super clean or uh, pattern is super buggy. And that's what we want. You just want to build up. Just a little bit, hold it back, and from here we shall move on to our next step. Alright, dub and loop. Now you can split this thread and I'm going to try to do what I can here without knocking the camera over. We're going to get a little bit, that's a little bit tricky, but that's right. You can just trap one end and then grab it and twist it. And they sort of semi cross over and you can catch that which is going to give you a nice sort of point of your loop right at the bottom of the wing. Move it forward. Now you want to keep an eye, you don't go too far, because you want to be able to tie off in there and build just a little bit of a head. Right. Next step. I'm just going to put just a little, 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 little well oh, that's not going to work anyway a little dabbing of uh, uh, wax along there so that when I put my dubbing twist in I'm just using a little shepherd's hook one for this just because my uh, stonefro doesn't quite fit in the way I've got this camera set up and hopefully take a readjustment so I can show you that one because that's a lot of fun Thanks. We've got our CDC again. Now this is going to be at the head of the fly. We just want to get this trapped in here. And just think about how long you want those. Uh, oh, not happy with that. Just think how long you want those uh, fibers to be sticking back and sticking out again. We're not aiming for a super smooth fly. This is supposed to be buggy. It's supposed to have heaps of movement from all the... Um, just trying to work my way around the camera here, apologise. It's going to get a bit interesting, but we'll give it a nudge. Just snip them. There's other ways you can do this. Uh, all sorts of uh, clips and devices and paraphernalia. Uh, it gets it all going. Uh, as you can see, I've got it nice and uh, secure in there anyway, in the meantime. Um, we just give it a, a twist and slowly, there's a line all cords up. You can see that start to spin. Presto. Pretty happy. 
Right, now you can use um, just that little shepherd's hook uh, twister uh, to do this, but um, with the camera, it's just so I find it easier at the moment to use the old hackle pliers. You just grab your dubbing loop with all the thread that was sticking out the bottom there. And from there, we're going to be wrapping this around uh, around our body. And we can give a file four x Yeah, just print it back uh, as you would if you were, say, doing a soft hackle. Oh, something similar. And we're just going to build it up. We're going to make a nice dark buggy uh, looking looking fly. And you just keep printing it back. Uh, sometimes you get a little bit of a little moisture on your fingers helps with that. Um, if that may be, I usually just lick them. Does the job. And just march that forward. So I'm just trying to work around here. I apologise. I realise this has been drifting in and out of uh, in and out of focus, but. Thanks. What it is. Cool. It came up just slightly short, but it's not going to be the end of the world. Okay, much like the ribbing, the fish ain't going to look at it and go, well, you finished up early. But I'll show you some of the ones I've done where I'm not stuck uh, reaching around behind the camera. There we go. Alright, final step. You yeah, just want to get a bit of a heat on this. Again, I'm going a little bit too short uh, with this one. Now you can tie it off uh, if you want like, that sort of hot spot head, um, by all means. I, however, want it to be black. So a little bit of uh, black sharpie. It will be in a way laughing. Now because I'm going to be using some more UV on this just to finish it off. And I'm not going to do too much more than a little couple turn whip finish. Tie it off. Grab your bodkin again. And just a little drop of uh, whatever your, your UV uh, varnish of choice is. And again, I'm a bit disappointed with the heat to be honest, but it's the joys of uh, trying to work out this whole filming thing uh, still. We'll just give that a little little blast. Which is just going to uh, cure that. One last thing, and you don't have to necessarily do this. Um, I like to, but you'll find because we've wrapped it around. It's just going to be a lot of fibres that are sticking down, and I think you can use them. They're going to add to the, the bugginess, if you will. Oops. Again, just trying to reach around this camera, but just go in directly underneath and take them away. And getting rid of them, you're going to be left with uh, you know a few fibres that are sticking out the side, going to look a bit leggy, and a few at the top, which are going to look like wings. There we have it. A little uh, CDC uh, dry fly. It's um, again okay, pretty versatile pen. You can just see that green coming through on the bottom there. A little bit of uh, ribbing from where we coloured it in, but I'll uh, get some photos and you can have a look. Uh, happy tying. Hopefully, see what you guys are. Uh, Done with your ones.
Cheers.